got it. She's got it. Glad you're here. So, Craig, what's going on here? I'm only here for a little bit. I'll be back later. Okay. Uh, are we on the air? Yes. Okay. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the regular open meeting of the third Laguna Hills Mutual Board of Directors meeting. This is Tuesday, October 20th, 2020, 9.30 a.m., and the meeting is being televised virtually. We would ask everybody uh, who must participate in this to silence your cell phones. And I'll uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, we do have a quorum. And uh, at this time, before we go any farther, we would like to make a public announcement. And uh, is Eileen or Chaman on? Chaman, you want to take care of that? Yes, President Parsons, thank you very Final much. Good morning, everyone. I wanted to let our viewing public know that Village Management Services is experiencing a network outage. This is affecting some telephone service and all email access. We appreciate your patience as we work to resolve this issue. Residents with comments or questions for today's meeting can call area code 949-268-2020. Again, that is 949-268-2020. Thank you very much. Siobhan? At this time, uh, we'll have uh, Greg, if you would like to, since you're still with us, if you'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Greg, are you available? Okay, uh, we'll turn to Ralph. Ralph, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Uh, thank you. Follow me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the nation for which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all, undivided with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. Okay, I want to acknowledge the media at a distance. And uh, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Uh, Steve? Is there a second, please? No, hang on, hang on, Steve. Just a minute, just a minute. Yeah. Is there a second to this? Okay, okay I second seconds. that. Okay, go ahead, Kush. I, I want to mention that 11A has some uh, language issue, and 12A... I recommend that we postpone this because we, at least I didn't get this package until Thursday evening and didn't get a chance to read everything. Well, that's the time that uh, they're supposed to have it to us. I so understand, but we had that. like uh, several different uh, meeting things. I understand. So, I understand. so this uh, is my request. 11A definitely has some language issues which need to be corrected. Okay, do we want to pull it to talk about it? If you like. So, okay. Question. If we pull it, it's already been on 28 days. Would it have to go back out again for the 28 days if we pull it? I assume it would then and go back yes. out for 28 days. It needs corrections. Okay, Lynn. That's the, <clears throat> are you sure it's 11A? Because that's the collection and lien enforcement policy. Yeah, I was reading through that and. Uh, okay, I just asked. Okay. Yeah, I can tell you what page I was talking, uh, looking at. So overall, I didn't go further after I found all this stuff that needed correction. I did not go any further. Okay. Um, why don't we talk about it when we get there and we can deal with it there. Okay. We'll make a note to uh, consider that. 
Okay. Uh, anything else uh, that anybody wants to bring up about the agenda? You got both of them, 11A and 12A. Oh, 12A? Yeah. Well, what are we going to do with that one? Floor? Well, we'll talk about them when we get there. Okay. Okay. All righty. Um, Sandra, do you want to chime in here? You got a comment? I do think that the um, collection policy needs to be reviewed or you won't have the ability uh, to enforce the association collection uh, in January. So I think that the board needs to uh, discuss with Chris what the changes are and then collectively you'll decide if you want to make the changes and then he's, you're entirely correct. It has to go out for another. I can barely hear you, Sandra. <laughs> I can barely hear you. The board of directors should discuss this as you are going to with Kush. The issue that we have is you need a collection policy for January 1st, 2021. So the board will discuss his changes. And if there are changes, then he's entirely correct. It has to go out for another 28-day comment period. So this is a very important part of today's uh, agenda. And you will collectively have to review those. OK, we can do it as we come to them, though, correct? That is correct. Okay. Alrighty. Any other things about the agenda? Okay. If not, we'll consider under unanimous consent. Move forward. Uh, approval of the minutes, September 15th, 2020. Regular open meeting. So here a motion to accept the minutes. Approval. So moved. Second. Okay, Annie. Uh, any uh, comments about the minutes? Okay. Okay, moving on to item six. Uh, we didn't have a chance before, but uh, I would like to introduce uh, two uh, new board members that will be coming on the board at, at the uh, annual meeting. And uh, I'd like to first just talk a little bit about Deborah Dotson. She has been able to be with us today. So I'll give a little bit of her bio so that uh, our public knows a little bit about her. She will be talking at a later meeting. She has a BA in leadership and organizational development and a master's in education, learning, and technology. Her background is as follows four years in a title escrow company. She was the youngest VP of the title insurance company. Uh, she has 16 years in healthcare, executive management. She built medical a medical clinic from the ground up, leasing space and equipment, hiring, training, and managing staff. Clinic is now 33 years and is still thriving. Uh, next uh, clinic uh, she worked in is uh, up and running in less than one year. She has 15 years in technology, technology sales management, and now is a professor at two universities part-time. Currently, the uh, University of Maryland, Global Campus, and National University, and this is from July 19th to present. Uh, some previous civic and social activities include volunteer in American Red Cross, former board secretary for Central Valley CUE educators and teachers, Former board members of Good Samaritan Society, the philanthropic group. Former board member and newsletter chair for Fresno Women's Network. And she is a current member of the Baby Boomers Club on campus. So we look forward to hearing more from her in the future. Uh, today we have Donna, uh, and I hope I pronounce this right, Renee Sasta. So if you would come up on screen, please, Donna, and unmute. I'll give a little bit of an overview. Uh, she has an education doctorate in psychology, uh, MSN, gerontological nursing, a nurse practitioner program, a BSN in nursing, BA in Spanish. Uh, some of the background, she's been an RN, nurse practitioner, healthcare education administrator, Healthcare consultant, 
a teaching English second language and Spanish teacher. Uh, man, she's got a lot going here. I think what I'll do is open it up and let her talk about it. <laughs> I've given her about three minutes to kind of introduce herself. So go ahead, Donna. Okay. Thank you, Steve. And thank you all of you for allowing me the opportunity to be on and serve on the board. Uh, my husband, Henrik, and I have lived in Laguna Woods Village for a little over 10 years. And um, the pronunciation of my name, to make it very easy, it's rain like the rain in Spain, and then show stack. If you pretend the Z is an H, you've got it. Um, that's your challenge for the day every time. Um, I'm really honored to be able to serve on the board. And you heard some of my background primarily in healthcare, in education. Uh, my, my degree in Spanish has also served me well with an understanding of our um, Hispanic community. Community involvement has always been important to me, and I hope my background and experience qualify me to serve well on the board. I've had a very long career in healthcare and public service. As you heard, I was a nurse practitioner and a nurse educator. Most recently, though, I think that my last experience in the work arena is what really qualified me for the board. I, up until the end of 2017, was Dean of Health Sciences and Human Services at Saddleback College. And that gave me an incredible opportunity, not only to gain administrative skills, budget management skills, people management skills, but I had a chance to work with many Orange County public organizations, primarily the Orange County Healthcare Agency, um, Orange County Emergency Services, because we did have the only paramedic training program in all of Orange County at the time, as well as emergent EMTs. Um, our nursing program gave me a chance to meet people at every one of the hospitals, as well as many of the other healthcare agencies. Um, I worked with the Orange County Board of Supervisors because of some funding that we had. And most important, perhaps, I had a chance to get really gain knowledge of the emeritus program from Saddleback that's so important to all of us. Um, I've also been uh, a member of the Saddleback Memorial Hospital Medical um, Facility for the last eight years. And um, I was just trying to silence my alarm for my timing. And when I retired from Saddleback, that allowed me to become more involved in Laguna Woods Village. I'm currently president of Gate 9 and 10, neighbors and friends, vice president of the 110 Club, and really look forward to hopefully serving the community as a member of the Third Mutual Board. Thank you so much, Donna. And uh, thank you for coming and uh, presenting yourself today so people can get to know you a little bit. Okay. Uh, as another announcement, I would like to bring up that uh, there will be another town hall meeting. That's October 22nd at 9.30 a.m. and will be televised. Okay, on to item seven, open forum. Uh, today uh, may be a little unusual. We have things that we need to deal with uh, the rest of the board meeting. So I'm going to limit it to the open forum being no more than 30 minutes. And this is for people to talk about things or ask questions that are not uh, on our agenda for today. So I'd like to open it up, and who do we have here? Good morning, President Parsons and esteemed members of the board. Uh, so far, I only have one member comment, and that is from Lynn Carbos from 3505 Season Charlie. Um, the comment is, I read in letters to the Globe that we have until 1021 uh, 10 to correct the threatened insurance premium increase for 2021. Why are you still falsely advertising that members must vote on this ballot now in order to avoid such an increase? It appears to me that you are attempting to do a rush job on getting this complete revision of the CCNRs and bylaws passed without any real opportunity for public understanding of the many changes in the 166 pages of legalized. Why uh, do you not have a summary of all changes for all members to read? For example, it appears to me the right of members of such a submutual to amend members' right to use of changes in common to exclusive use areas have been completely eliminated. Any such amendment would have to be voted on by the entire membership of this corporation, over 6,000 members. Am I right? 
please explain. For heaven's sake, we have less than a month away from a presidential election. We are in the middle of the annual health insurance selection period. The property tax appeals in the middle of a pandemic with no ability to speak of opinions, meet with others, etc. Please stop the express train effort now. Get members sufficient time to understand the evaluate all changes in the CCNRs and bylaws. How can we change our vote after it is uh, deposited in the ballot box and before ballot box opening today? That's all I have for right now. Okay. Robert, would you like to take the first part of that? Sure, I'll be happy to, Steve. I'll address the issue related to the insurance. I think there's a real misunderstanding by the members of Third Mutual that, uh, while well, yes, we did bind our insurance at this point on October 1, 2020, for the next year. However, the increase, if we do absolutely nothing, the, you have to remember that the board is taking an additional $1.8 million out of the reserves to compensate for the raise in insurance. And we can't do that next year. So what will happen next year at an absolute minimum if we do nothing, and that's if United and GRF stay with us in terms of going forward, we will pass on a minimum raise to the members of $46 per man or per month to cover the actual cost of our current insurance. And that doesn't include any increase that might take place in insurance next year. So to say that we have a year is not really accurate because we're already facing a $46 per man or per month on top of the $20 per man or per month that you're gonna be paying now. Okay, so that uh, tends to show you the urgency of why we were pushing it once we got the information. And uh, from the insurance companies, we didn't get full disclosure on what the policies are going to cost us until about uh, two and a half weeks uh, before we went ahead and started announcing it uh, to everyone. So, yes, it was a rush. However, things like this happen, and we've got to adjust. We felt it was our uh, duty to inform people about what was going on, and that's why we have continued going forward to have people at least become aware of the situation and uh, vote so that we could have a little more flexibility in how we handle our insurance. So Sandra, did you want to add anything to that? On the insurance issue, I think Robert, you said that it, the money came out of the reserves. I thought it came out of the disaster fund. I could be wrong. Correct. I want You're correct. I misstated it's the disaster fund. I apologize. I just want to make sure that we're as, as clear as possible. Uh, I would like to address the issue of how do you get your ballot back once voted. You don't. The statute says that um, once it is submitted to the inspector of election, that ballot is voted and uh, you're not able uh, to get that ballot back. If you have an issue with your ballot or you're, you never received your ballot, as you know that there is a hotline to request a replacement ballot. <clears throat> but if it was already voted, then uh, that is your vote for this election issue. Uh, I also want to say that nothing replaces being able to uh, be in person with people and have chats with your neighbors, your the organizations you're involved in. But the board has had numerous uh, town halls and meetings with the members to be heard on the concerns or issues anybody might have with the CCNRs. So although I do recognize that it's different than being in person, I want to make certain that all of the owners understand that this interchange has been consistent and ongoing. And as Steve, you just mentioned, there'll be another town hall this Thursday. So homeowners' questions can be answered and that they can be heard on the issues. Thank you. Any other comments from board members? Okay. Uh, Becky, do we have any other uh, questions or comments? I have none at this time. So we'll go ahead to uh, item nine then, the CEO, COO report. Good morning, uh, President Parsons and board members and to our um, residents out there. I have a couple of things that I wanted to report on and then I'll pass it over to Siobhan. 
The first thing um, I wanted to um, uh, reiterate um, comment that uh, Shaban had made at the very beginning, which was unfortunately we've had experienced a, a network outage here at the Laguna Woods. That network, that network outage has impacted um, our email operation uh, the most. Um, we are still effectively operating. Though I want to ensure people of that we can still take your call in at resident services. However, um, the the process for taking reports or working on uh, work orders is changed internally because of this email outage. So you can still call in. You can you can also still use ActiveNet and and call in with regards to recreation activities and certainly um, anything with regards to an emergency. Uh, that you may have still continue to call 911. Um, that, that is the appropriate action. If it's just a question about our own security, you can contact uh, them by phone as well. We and are working on this. Um, we, it started um, Sunday. Uh, we've been working on it diligently since it occurred. Um, we hope to have some resolution to it in the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, so that we can get everything um, back running the, the way um, we have in the past. Um, I uh, apologize for the inconvenience that it is to uh, not only the, the residents out there, but to you board members um, with regards to that. Uh, and I apologize for that. And we, we are working very, very diligent with our RT, IT staff and everybody to, to get us back up on board as soon as we can. So um, um, stay with us. I apologize for that again, um, but we... Um, We'll take your phone calls and we'll work it that way just as we are today for this meeting and in any future um, coming up. And if we don't have it fixed in the next day or so, we'll have to use the same phone system going forward. But, but we, um, we'll keep you posted and we'll keep it posted on TV6, which is working fine. And um, we'll keep a scroll going on TV6 to keep people informed as much as possible. The second thing I wanted to mention was I usually give you a little quick update on COVID-19. Um, yesterday, uh, it was reported that we had 203 positive cases, which is a little bit of an uptick um, um, over the last um, couple of weeks. That um, slight uptick also has had an impact in our, um, just a slight increase in our hospitalization rate. We're at 168 hospital beds being used right now and 63 ICU um, beds. This is consistent with the um, COVID uptick that is being seen uh, throughout the United States, some, some very severe in some states. In California, it's been um, county by county. It depends on um, which county you're in. So our uptick's not real bad, um, but, but we've seen that since the last holiday uh, session. With regards to um, Laguna Woods, we're at 70, we're still at 70 cases. Um, we did have, um, we're now up at eight, um, unfortunately eight deaths that have occurred in Laguna Woods. Again, this is the whole city um, encompassed in that number, not just Laguna Woods Village. Um, so take that. The um, important number is right now, the um, positive rate is, is at 4.6 per 100,000. Um, that puts us in the second tier, um, which is the substantial tier. And in order to get down to the moderate tier, uh, we have to get below four. Um, one of the, and that is the average, that 4.6 that I just mentioned. I wanted to um, indicate to the board that there has been a change out of the governor's office with regards to addressing when a county can go to the next tier. And part of that is that they need to bring in their, all of their census tracts into um, a coordinated effort to get below um, that average number. And the important reason I say that is looking at the information this morning, we have 77 census tracts that are either in the widespread or substantial areas within the county. Um, even though South County um, has very few that are in that um, substantial and widespread, uh, North County has a bigger impact. And so the, the, the way the governor's office is now um, promulgated their um, operations is that they want to see counties address those specific census tracts and get them down to the average number before they move into the next tier. So I would anticipate that um, Orange County is going to stay in the um, red tier, uh, which is the substantial tier for a little bit longer uh, than they had hoped for. 
And that's um, my update um, with regards to COVID-19. And um, again, want to apologize to everyone um, with regards to our, our network outage, and we're working very diligent to get, to get that um, up and running. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Shabbat. Thank you, Jeff. Honorable President, members of the board, I would like to share some key updates with you this morning, please. Uh, first, we're happy to announce that new resident orientation is back. So we encourage residents new to the village to attend our new virtual resident orientation. This information session is an opportunity to familiarize yourself with the operating rules of the mutual, talk with a board member who represents the mutual. The next third mutual orientation sessions will be Wednesday, October 21st, Friday, November 20th, and Wednesday, December 16th. Residents must RSVP by emailing executive assistant Becky Jackson at becky.jackson at vms.org. The Recreation Department has some exciting updates for our residents. The Outdoor Fitness Center is open in the city, um, the communities, community, uh, at Clubhouse One, I'm sorry. The Outdoor Fitness Facility is open at Clubhouse One in the Breezeway. The hours are 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. daily. The bocce courts are now open also at Clubhouse One. They're open daily from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Swimming pools, um, we have Pool One now open for recreational use between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4, 4 p.m. daily. And Pool Four hours have been extended to 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Additionally, the Recreation Department invites residents to dress up, decorate their golf carts, and parade around the village for Halloween on Saturday, October 31st at 10 a.m. The parade begins at Clubhouse One in the parking lot at 9.30 a.m. with the actual parade beginning at 10. Participants must remain in their carts, wear face coverings, and maintain six feet of social distancing. Registration for this free event is available on ActiveNet, and you may visit the Village website news page for additional information. We also wanted to let residents know that next week, tree trimming in the Aliso Creek area will occur. The landscaping department will oversee trimming of several large trees on the adjacent slopes to the creek. Contractors will be trimming and zip lining debris over the creek and down into the meadow where it will be cut up and hauled away. Residents are cautioned to be aware of moving vehicles and avoid areas marked with caution tape and traffic cones until the work has been completed. On Friday, October 30th, there will be a drive-through flu shot clinic. This is sponsored by Memorial Care Medical Group, Aetna, Kaiser, and several, several other local sponsors. The location is the Florence Sylvester Senior Center, located at 23721 Moulton Parkway in Laguna Hills. For the time of the clinic, those who have last names that start with A through M should attend from 1 to 2 p.m. on October 30th. And those with last names beginning with N through Z should attend from 2 to 3 on October 30th. Face coverings are required, and residents may call 949-380-0155 for more information. And lastly, with respect to the national election, the City of Laguna Woods is serving as a vote center and has a drop-off ballot box. The ballot box opened on October 5th and will run through election night. The vote center will open on October 30th and run through November 3rd, election day. And that concludes my comments. Thank you. Just a couple of questions for you. Did you give us an update on the census, the national census? And also I've seen message traffic wondering about uh, voting, the national election being conducted or held as a drop-off area in Clubhouse 7. Could you address those two for us? Um, the last day to call in and respond to the census was last Wednesday, so that is now uh, complete. And then the only area drop-off box for the national election is at the City of Laguna Woods City Hall. There are no drop-off boxes within our community. Any questions for staff? John Frankel? Yes, uh, Jeff, tomorrow is um, uh, traffic hearings. Will the violators be able to call in 
If not, they need to be called and canceled. It's all been coordinated, John. Okay, thank you. Other questions for staff? Lynn, you're muted. John, can you please uh, repeat Becky's email address? Because I don't think uh, I heard it correctly. Of course. I think you Please, thank you. It is Becky dot Jackson at VMS INC period org O R G. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, moving on to uh, item 10 consent calendar. I have a motion to accept uh, this item is a consent item. Annie moves, Robert seconds. Okay, uh, any discussion on this? If not, we'll consider it under unanimous consent. Okay, on to item 11. And uh, Lynn, would you like to uh, start out by giving an overview of this? Uh, well, actually, um, okay. This policy was brought forth at the September 15th meeting of the third Laguna Hills Mutual and was approved and has satisfied its 28-day notification for a member review and comment to comply with Civil Code 4360. It has also satisfied the California Civil Code Section 5310A7 uh, and, if adopted, will be distributed to members in November 2020 as part of the annual policy. I was going to ask for a motion, but if we have, well, I can ask for a motion and we can discuss. Do I have a motion for this policy? Annie moves. Robert seconds. Okay, we're open for discussion here. Hey, Chris, do you want to bring up your ideas there? Uh, yeah, I think after I spoke earlier, I briefly turn the pages to see that the policy is actually further down and what really stumped me was the page four of 60 apparently that is like a working page with information that that needed to be corrected but i haven't really had a chance to review the whole policy so which starts on uh, Page 33 onwards, correct? Am I reading it right? It's item 11A. It uh, has page 3 of 60. So my, my problem was on page 4 of 60, where the language did not sound correct. Can you steer us to the exact location? Page 4 of 60... The, the first paragraph, we sincerely trust that all the members onwards in that paragraph, the language did not sound correct. So I thought that we have a problem in this policy, so I raised an objection. But when I turned around and looked further, the policy starts on page 33. Lynn, is that correct? Oh, no. Yes, that's the policy statement, yes. Okay. So I did not get there and read the rest of the policy, so my apology for that, because there were so many pages to read, even in the GRF uh, things and this and that. So I did not get that far. So that's why I raised an objection. The, the paragraph on page 4 seemed very vernacular, so I did not read any further. Are you making a motion of any sort? I was going to ask that we postpone it for a month so we can review it correctly. I may be the only one, but I'm sure there are other people who would like to see it to review it properly. Okay, I make a motion that we postpone it for one month and review it, I mean, get to it next month. A second?
Sandra? Aren't we in the middle of another motion? Well, we brought it forth for acceptance, yes. But he's uh, moving to postpone or table it. Not table, postpone. You look it's great about it. on the first part, but if there's no second, then that uh, motion dies. I understand. So it's up to everybody else because this is a very important policy change because it affects everybody's pocketbook. Okay, Robert? I'd speak to the motion. I have had, Chris, I have had the opportunity to read it. In fact, okay. I read it le between the last month and this month because we had it last month. So I, I read it then and I re re reviewed it now and it seems fine to me. Okay. I speak okay, in favor. Shall come back. Is there any second to the motion to postpone? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we would pass that. No. Okay. If not, uh, that motion fails to uh, postpone it. So we're back to the original motion. And it's been moved and seconded. Would this be accepted and adopted? Any other discussion? Okay. Unless there are any objections, we'll consider this under common consensus as accepted. And we'll move on to 11B. Thank you to give us an overview of 11B. Um, okay, this, um, this 11B, it amends the resolution to extend the exterior paint and prior to paint program. This resolution was approved and brought forth to this board on September the 15th, 2020. It rescinds resolution 3-12-97, amending the current exterior prior to paint programs from a 10-year cycle to a 15-year cycle and extends the mid-cycle balcony and breezeway resurfacing, resurfacing the top coat program from a five-year cycle to a seven-and-a-half-year cycle. This resolution has satisfied its 28-day notification for member review and comment to comply with Civil Code 4360. It has been satisfied. Is there a motion on the floor to adopt this resolution? Okay, Annie. Is there a second? Okay, Robert seconds it. Okay, discussion. Robert, did you want to discuss anything on this? Well, MNC spent a lot of time reviewing this. We've also had discussions with United. United is also moving to the same paint cycle that we're going to move that we're proposing to move to. Uh, we anticipate saving as much as $713,000 per year on this uh, changing the paint cycle to 15 years. Uh, we expect to save um, approximately $404,000 on the paint and $308,000 on the prior to paint program. Uh, we have letters from both of the uh, vendors for our paint that say that they will at no additional cost to Third Mutual change the warranty on the paint from 10 to 15 years. And we haven't had any real issues with failure at the 10 years, and we don't anticipate that we'll have any problems going forward. So this seemed to make a lot of sense. One of the other things we did last month that the board remembers is that we had a request from a number of homeowners who had been previously bypassed. And part of our approach to MNC is to have those 99 units that were previously bypassed when we shifted to the 10-year cycle, they would be first in line as we finish up the buildings that we're involved with this year, they would be first in line when we start up the process next year. So, they, uh, so that's the second feature of this process. And uh, for, I know people are wanting to know about dry rot, so let me just uh, read a little excerpt here so it's uh, fully understood. When dry rot is discovered between the 15-year program cycles, whether it be for an exterior building penetration, architectural features exposed to the elements, or the deterioration of a moisture barrier behind the stucco, the mutual has an annually funded general maintenance exterior carpentry division to address needed repairs. I know that had come up in the past. I just want to make that clear. Okay, any other discussion? 
Okay. If there's no more discussion, we'll consider this under common consensus. Unless somebody has an objection. Okay. Item 11B is taken care of. Okay. New business. Uh, turn that over to Lynn for item 12A. Okay. Wait a lot. Okay. This is uh, the rules for board meetings. And I wanted to read the resolution, but if uh, we have someone that already has a question on I'm not sure I want to go through the whole thing. But I will say that this proposed resolution is to allow the board to have successful, efficient, and orderly board meetings. Manor owners have the right to observe the open board meetings and are encouraged to attend. But meetings which are disorderly or too long can be discouraging. These rules inform both director and non-directors as to what is expected of all attending board meetings and how they are conducted. The goal is orderly and efficient meetings, protection of owners' right to observe productive deliberations, and enhancement of the governance and the membership experience in Third Laguna Hills Mutual. I make a motion that we approve this resolution as it is uh, on page 3 of 28, <clears throat> and this will give us a chance to go to uh, discussion. But anyway, do I hear a motion to approve this resolution? I'll move Robert. to approve the resolution. I second. Okay. Discussion? Does this go on a 28-day uh, cycle? Yes. Okay, good. Gives us enough time to review it. Okay. Uh, we don't need to take a vote here, but uh, it will go on 28 days. Okay. Uh, reading of item 12B, entertain a motion to ratify insurance payments and funding from disaster funds for 2020 2021 annual insurance renewal. Go ahead, Lynn, if you do know. Well, I'm going to turn this over to Robert to read. He, he volunteered this morning. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> okay, thank you, Director Jarrett. Okay, this has to do with the funding for the 2020-21 insurance renewals. And I'll just read the resolution. This is, uh, whereas Beecher Carlson Insurance Services, the insurance broker for the community, worked several months on October 1st, 2020 renewal for expiring lines of property insurance. And whereas the boards were advised during the business planning meetings of the potential financial impact of renewals in a difficult market and discussed the inclusion of pricing increases in the proposed budget for 2021, and whereas the broker met with the board multiple times in August and September to discuss renewal project progress and continue difficulties facing during a tightening of the reinsurance market, in addition to premium increases related to updated property values. And whereas final premium quotations for all renewing lines were received and bound on September 30th, 2020, amounting to $4,975,797 for the third mutual portion of the 12 month policy period, exceeding the operating budget of $3,143,112 for same. And whereas the disaster fund is used for the repair or replacement of mutual assets damaged by uninsured or unexpected disasters, in addition to providing for certain insurance premiums as directed by the board, this fund may also be used for write-offs of uncollectible accounts according to the original definition of the general operating fund. Now, therefore, be it resolved, October 20th, 2020, that the Board of Directors hereby ratifies expenditures of up to $1.8 million from the disaster fund to cover insurance policy payments from 10-1-2020, that's October 1st, 2020, through September 30th, 2021 in addition to the amounts included in the 2020 and 2021 business plans for insurance during the same period. Resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation 
are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. Can I get a motion to approve this resolution? I move that we approve this motion. I Thank you, Kush. This is Kush. Okay. Yes. Glenn seconds Steve, it. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, I, can, I can only add one thing, Steve, that this was a very okay. difficult uh, uh, process. And we worked very hard to get to the stage. We spent hundreds of hours on this person and uh, on the board as well as uh, some staff and uh, even BMS has been in on this uh, working a little so uh, this has not been an easy road but uh, we think it is good to uh, have this in place and uh, BMS needs this so they can move forward with it. so if there's no other questions we'll consider this under Forward to committee reports. We'll start off with Director Mushnick on the Finance Committee slash Financial Report. Thank you, President Parsons. It's hard to believe that this is my third monthly report to you as Treasurer. The first few months have been a learning process, getting to know the VMS staff related to the financial end of the business, learning about the different processes from how accounting is done to the approval of checks. While I'm sure I still have a ways to go in terms of the learning curve, I am now starting to feel more comfortable as your treasurer and more in control of the data I now present to you. As I stated, started last month, I will be sharing with you some slides that are very different from what the previous treasurer used to share. The slides you will be seeing are different in that many of them now provide you with a direct comparison month over month. So you can see the progression in revenues and expenses in some cases for the last three months and others for the last two months of available data. Please keep in mind that all of the financial data you are seeing today is from the 31st of August. Even though it is October 20th, this is the most up-to-date monthly information available for presentation. So please keep in mind much of what you are seeing has already changed. However, at least you have a sense of how things are trending as we move towards the end of the year. Can I have slide two, please, Grant? Okay, this slide provides you with an overview of how income increased month over month for the three months ending August 31st. From July 31st to August 31st, Third Mutual saw an additional assessment revenue in the amount of $2,764,000, so that at the end of August, Third Mutual had a total assessment revenue of $22,109,000. The increase in assessment revenue from July to August is consistent with the increase that we had from June to July. In terms of non-assessment revenue, the, there was an additional $85,000 brought in since the end of July. This created a total revenue of $23,849,000 by the end of August, meaning an additional revenue of $2,849,000. While there was a decline in the non-assessment revenue, the difference in total revenue for the month of August was $150,000 less than the previous month, an approximate 5% decline in this category. Expenses increased during this time period by an additional $2,403,000, leaving Third Mutual with a net revenue of $3,973,000 which is an increase of $446,000 in net revenue for the past 31 days. Note that while there was an increase in net revenue, we anticipate that the net revenue will actually decline during the next four months since we have now brought back almost all the individuals who are on furlough and have restarted such projects as the Prior to Paint, the Paint Project, Wasteline Remediation, et cetera, which oftentimes involves outside contractors. Slide three, please. This slide presents data for operating fund only for the months of June, July, and August. Assessment revenue increased over the most recent 31-day period by $1,686,000, the same amount as the previous month. Non-assessment revenue increased by $124,000 for total revenue increase for the last 31 days 
of $1,810,000. During the same period, third total expenses increased by $1,864,000. This reduced the operating surplus $54,000 to a final sum for this period of $530,000. Again, as indicated earlier, we anticipate expenses to increase in part uh, over the next couple of months. Uh, also understand that out, out, outside services, contractors, which were either curtailed or reduced, will see an uptick over the next few months, which will mean an increase in expenses. Slide four, please. This slide, compare, is that slide four? This slide four compares our revenues and expenses to what was actually budgeted. As can be seen from this slide, actual and budgeted assessment revenue was, as one would expect, the same. In terms of non-assessment revenue, third mutual non-assessment revenue for the month of August was greater than the anticipated budget by $415,000. Expenses for the month of August were less than budgeted, leaving a variance of actual revenue minus expenses versus what was budgeted of a plus $5 million $955,000. Okay. Again, don't think of this positive variance as one that Third Mutual can maintain. Now that we're back in full force, things will obviously change over the next few months. Slide five, please. This slide provides you with a picture of select budget items and the current variance associated with each for the end of August. You also have the opportunity to see how each of these variances compares to the variance for each category at the end of both June and July. The green bars represent the variances at the end of June, while the gold bars represent the dollar amount of the variance for each category at the end of July. And the brown bars represent the, this reporting period, August. As you can see, looking only at the brown bars, third has a favorable variance for each of the categories from outside service employee compensation, unrealized gains on AFS, materials and supplies, and utilities and telephone for the period ending August 31st. The last two categories have, have unfavorable variances. In the case of insurance, the unfavorable variance is a result of the higher than expected premiums to the tune of $364,000. I'm sorry to say that this variance will become even more unfavorable as the rest of 220 progresses. As members of Third Mutual, you also need to understand that through no control of your board of directors, insurance will continue to be a very serious problem budget-wise, not only for the remainder of this year, but for next year as well. The major insurance carriers, some of which have been our carriers for the last 20 years, refuse to write insurance for next year unless the village obtained an updated evaluation of the property. The latest evaluation of the whole village is almost five times what it was last year showing how out of date our previous evaluation was. The increased evaluation coupled with the concerns insurance companies have with all of the wildfires in California and our proximity to a wildlife area that has the potential to cause problems adds on top of the cost of the increase based on the new evaluation and approximately 20% cost of increase in the premium for next year. On the positive side, I can tell you that your board is working very, very hard to address all angles to the control of the cost of insurance. Soon we will have the results of the ballot proposition to update the CCNRs, which, if, if approved, will provide the board with greater flexibility to address the insurance problem. The second unfavorable variance is $157,000 for fees and charges. This is an unfavorable balance because the termination hearings must be held before members can be billed for their share of the moisture intrusion costs. However, the figure of $157,000 shows an improvement in this category of $7,000 over the previous month. As more determination hearings are held, we anticipate a continued decline in this negative variance. Slide six, please. <laughs> this slide depicts two pie charts, the one on the left for July 31st, while the one on the right is for total non-assessment revenue for the period ending the 31st of August. Third had an additional non-assessment income of $84,806 month over month. Most of the different categories of the two pie charts stayed fairly similar in terms of the percent of revenue they generate, with the exception of unrealized gains, 
which dropped 7% month over month. Slide seven, please. Again, this slide depicts two pie charts for comparison purposes. Month over month, third had additional expenses of $2,402,599. In terms of the different categories, outside services had a slight decrease in total dollar amount from the previous month, decreasing approximately 2% of overall expenses. Keep in mind that third has outside contractors to provide services like slope maintenance, tree trimming, roof repair, etc., which contribute to the lease costs are based on their billings each month, which fluctuate. Know that I and one other board member, Ralph Engdahl, review each of the bills from outside vendors each month and compare the request to their contracts before we authorize payment. Slide eight, please. You will note from this slide, if you look at the lower right-hand corner, that as of August 31st, Third Mutual had almost $32,330,000 for reserves and contingencies. This represents an increase in this category of approximately $330,000 for the past month. This includes $87,000 in the Garden Villa Fund, just over $4,125,000 in the Unappropriate Expenditures Fund, $9,117,000 in the Disaster Fund, and $19 million in the Replacement Fund. Year-to-date, third had $9.6 million in contributions and interest added to these funds, while we had $6 million in expenditures for a net increase year-to-date of just over $3.5 million, which is total increase in the non-operating fund balance of $533,000 over the previous month. A good sign for the mutual. Slide nine, please. Slide nine compares the different fund balances for the past five years, which have averaged $28.6 million. Please note that third has been committed to supporting the goals of the reserve requirements, while at the same time trying to balance the need of unexpected events. One such unexpected event that will take its toll on these funds is something that has already been mentioned numerous times, and that is the anticipated cost of insurance for next year. I can't emphasize enough the need for concern about the cost of insurance for third. While your board is taking whatever steps are both legally and financially possible to address this issue, there is only so much we can do. As stated in many venues, the passage of the ballot proposition will help us on behalf to influence the cost of insurance. Slide 10, please. This slide provides you with a picture of the resale situation for third for the past five years. The good news is that we saw a substantial increase in the number of sales for the month of July over the previous three months. And while August was a good month, it was slightly behind July by three resales. In terms of good news, this year we have seen a slight increase in the average sale price of manors over last year. However, total sales for this year still lag considerably behind the past two years to date. We are down 57 resales for the same time period last year and 70 resales against the year before. I recently received the numbers for September, too late to add to the chart. September had 30 additional resales, causing us to lag last year at this time by 60 resales. The average resale price for this year, including September, is $426,000, up an average of $15,000 over the average for resale price for last year. And lastly, Leasing report. The monthly leasing report for September indicates 1,674 manors out of 6,102 were leased. This represents a lease rate of 27.4%. And that's my report, President Parsons. Any questions? We have one question uh, from Wei Ming. Uh, you want to ask your question, please? Okay. Oh, uh -huh. um, so those numbers, except the fund balance, were they all year to date? The fund balances were all as of August 31st. Year to date? Yeah, year okay. to date, August 31st, correct. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you for that. Okay, on to the Architectural Standards, uh, Controls and Standards Committee. Uh, as you know, Robbie Donkost, has uh, been installed as a new 
uh, manager for uh, manor alterations. He's been going through the uh, total process under his control and uh, making adjustments as they go. Uh, one of the things the committee has been done, doing is a review of the standards, and uh, there are some new standards that are coming through we're looking at, as well as uh, we are also looking for you know, bringing forward new building materials that can be used uh, not only by our staff, but also by people who are doing alterations. So that's an ongoing effort, and uh, we hope to have more things to bring to you in the future on building materials. That's all I have on that. Our next meeting is going to be November 23rd, 2020 at 9.30, uh, virtual meeting. Okay, on to item 12C, or excuse me, 13C, Report Communications Committee. Director McCary. Thank you, President Parsons. The uh, third communication committee meeting has not met this year. However, we do participate in the GRF Media and Communications Committee, and I will have a report on that when we get to the, the GRF committees. Thank you. Okay. Uh, report of Maintenance Construction Committee, Director Mixon. The Maintenance Construction Committee last met September 9th, and I gave a report then in our September meeting. The next meeting of the Maintenance Construction Committee is November 2nd, 2020 at 1.30 p.m., and it will be a virtual meeting. Thank you. Okay, uh, on to the Berkeley and Gulf Task Force. That's uh, myself giving the report. Uh, as you know, uh, we have had to forestall this program this year due to uh, reducing expenditures to cover insurance requirements. We will be regrouping in January of 2021, uh, so stand by for news on that. Okay. Uh, we hope to have a meeting uh, no later than the 6th of January, 2021. Okay, on to Garden Villa Rec Room Subcommittee, Director Jen. Thank you, President Parsons. The Garden Villa Rec Room Subcommittee met for the second time this year on October the 5th. We usually meet quarterly, but as you know, the pandemic hit us. The rec rooms have been closed since the beginning of the pandemic. Our main VMS maintenance supervisor for the rec rooms was furloughed from mid-March through August. When he returned to work, he and his team were able to get into the rec rooms without having to schedule work around residence calendars and perform all of the work that was scheduled for the year. Uh, like, for example, replacing some of the carpets, painting some of the rooms, replacing some old blinds, and much more. All planned 2020 work was completed by our meeting on October the 5th this month. In the meantime, uh, the supervisor, he's performing inspections at all 53 rec rooms so that when we meet again in February, we can plan a replacement schedule for components for 2021. Thank you. Questions for Director Jared. Okay, if you have not, we'll move on to the Landscape Committee. Director Jared again. Okay. Wait. Oh, if, a second. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah, you are breaking in and out. That's, I just wanted to mention that you, your volume is going up and down and sometimes lost. Okay. I'll make an okay. adjustment here. <clears throat> On landscape, we did not have a meeting uh, in November, but I do want to mention a few things. It's good to report that landscape is now fully staffed. It's that time of the year when grass isn't growing so high, so as of the first of the month, mowing is on a bi-weekly basis. In between times, the workers are busy working on weeding, trimming, and reseeding where needed. Tree trimming is nearly done for this year. It may actually be done by now. We've had uh, good success with the contractors uh, with landscaping, the slopes and the trees particularly. This is uh, there is an ongoing. There is some discuss Excuse me. There is some discussion on discontinuing new plantings close to units for fire control, and there is further consideration being given to removing trees planted in <coughs> in <coughs> Excuse me. In groves for possible fire safety and possible damage to underground pipes. Due to Thursday annual meeting being held 
on November the 5th in the morning. The next meeting will be on that day in the afternoon at 3 p.m. The meeting will be streamed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on to the water subcommittee, Director Karimi. Uh, Mr. President, uh, the water subcommittee didn't have a meeting scheduled and uh, for the whole year, and probably the first meeting we're going to have going to be started next year. Uh, but, you know, as usual, I do my pitch about the water usage, and uh, we do have uh, high water usage in certain areas, and you receive the letter uh, through the mail about the water usage, and please, please help us to conserve. That's my pitch for today. Thank you, Mr. President. On to the Resident Policy and Compliance Committee, Director Jared. Thank you, President Parsons. Currently, the committee is working on completing the barbecue rules, which we have worked on for the past few meetings, trying to finalize the safety rules we feel are so important. We've had a good year, which I'll be reporting on at our annual meeting. Our next meeting is October the 27th at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, on the GRF committee highlights, so uh, Community Activities Committee, Director Bada. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, we had a good meeting on October the 8th for the Community Activities Committee. Uh, the highlight of that meeting was that the recreation fees will not be increased in 2020 or and remain the same till the end of 2021. Um, there were, uh, although you heard a lot of uh, new activities announced by Shawan, our COO, earlier, uh, whatever information I give you would be old because our meeting was on October 8th. Um, there is, uh, Recreation has uh, organized a drive-in dance party, which is going to be, which is one of the first ones. They have organized four of them. So the first one is on October 25th. It's $5 a car um, or a golf cart and a maximum of four persons would be allowed in the car. Masks are important, and you need to be in the car or around. You may be able to get out and dance outside the car. The next item that was con uh, considered was the outdoor activities list. Uh, oh, sure, yeah. There's a whole bunch of outdoor activities that were discussed at that time. But again, as I mentioned, um, uh, Shavan had a whole list of stuff that she wanted uh, told us earlier today. Uh, what was the mo most important thing is that the Clubhouse One has an outside gym in the hallway uh, that is available for people to use, but have to reserve the spots through ActiveNet. Uh, and that's my report for uh, CAC meetings. The next meeting is November 23rd. Shall I continue, uh, Steve, because the next one is mine too. Go ahead. Okay, the next one is the Equestrian uh, Center Committee, the Ad Hoc Committee. Uh, there is nothing new to report for that. Our next meeting for Equestrian uh, Committee is October the 27th. Thank you. Okay, uh, GRF Finance Committee, Director Muchnick. GRF Finance Committee last met officially on uh, August 31st. The next meeting is scheduled for October 21st. Tomorrow at 1.30 is a virtual meeting. GRF Maintenance Construction Committee, oh, sorry, uh, GRF Landscape Committee, Director Jarrett. Um, the GRF Landscape Committee hasn't met recently, but uh, there is a meeting scheduled for November the 9th at 1.30 p.m. That will be a virtual meeting. Thank you. GRF Maintenance Construction Committee, Director Bada. The GRF uh, 
Maintenance and Construction Committee met uh, last week, uh, and uh, uh, there was a very long list on the agenda. Uh, it entirely seemed like we were discussing the, the Performing Arts Center. Uh, so many items were discussed. There was no conclusive resolution on anyone except that we did approve changing the lights in the PAC to LEDs. Uh, everything is still under discussion and review. So that's what's happening. Our next meeting is on December 9th, but they are also considering to change it to monthly meetings. Uh, that's not that's not resolved yet. So don't know when the next uh, MNC GRF MNC committee uh, is meeting. Except it could be December 9th. Thank you. On to the uh, PAC renovation ad hoc committee. I believe there's been some changes there. Director Muchnik would like to talk about that. And also Clubhouse One renovation ad hoc committee. Okay. Thank you, uh, President Parsons. The uh, PAC renovation ad hoc committee has been officially disbanded by GRF. They have now been handling most of the uh, kinds of things that they want to do in terms of renovation through the MNC committee of GRF. So they disbanded that at their last uh, public meeting. As for Clubhouse One renovation, there's a meeting uh, this Thursday, October 23rd at 1 p.m., and it's a virtual meeting. And there's going to be a discussion about uh, some of the proposals and how to proceed with the renovation. Thank you. Okay. On to Media and Communications Committee, Director uh, McCary. Thank you, uh, President Parson. <clears throat> the Media and Communications Committee did meet on yesterday. It was a virtual mute meeting. Some of the highlights of that committee, um, a new chair of the committee, Joan Milliman, was introduced. In addition, there's also a new advisor, Juanita Skillman, that's uh, on this committee as well. As mentioned earlier, new resident orientation will begin this week. It is virtual. Residents attend this via reservation, and I am told that the class for tomorrow is already full. So I look forward to doing the, the new resident orientation. Also of note, uh, Eileen reported that the uh, magazine, The Village Breeze, is already out, and some members may have already gotten their breeze. There's still some issues with the post office and delivery, and those issues are being looked at uh, ongoing. So the um, for residents who do not get their Village Breeze magazine, there are going to be boxes at several different clubhouses where there are additional copies. And so if you don't have your copy, you can call the uh, Media and Communications Office, and they'll tell you which clubhouse. I did have that note, but I scratched it out. So there are going to be additional copies at some of the clubhouses if residents don't don't get their breeze. Also, the uh, broadband uh, study analysis that has been going on for a while is finally complete, and a consultant will present a summary of that analysis at our next meeting. In addition, members of the community will get a complete report of all of that, and that will be discussed at the next meeting as well. Uh, Siobhan also already alluded to the power outage and that's affecting the internet service. Media and communications are working on getting some alternate um, resources available for residents and alternate uh, email address, and Siobhan did mention that earlier. So they are working on, uh, on that. Um, Let's see, the last thing that I have for media and communication, um, the next meeting is scheduled for November 16th. It will be a virtual meeting. Uh, the time will be 1.30 p.m. Thank you. Very much. On to Mobility and Vehicles Committee, Director Franklin. The uh, Mobility and Vehicles Committee uh, met on October 7th. Uh, we didn't, uh, there's not a lot on the table. We did discuss the, 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 the we always get a review of the uh, status and the, the fixed route uh, bus is uh, generating slightly more than uh, 
3,300 uh, uh, usage per month. It's up slightly. Uh, they discussed a, a, a fee for a destination shopping program. This is a, a specialized bus system that takes people to Walmart and to Costco, and they're going to there's a motion to <clears throat> charge ten dollars for that uh, that particular endeavor, and uh, that's all I had to report. On to Security and Community Access Committee, Director Butler. Uh, there is nothing new to report on that. As uh, our last meeting was of August 28th, 24th, my apology. Our next meeting is October 26th, which is coming up very quickly. Thank you. Is that preparedness task force, Director McClary? The Thank you, um, President Parsons. The disaster task force met on September 29th at 9.30. That was a virtual meeting. Uh, there is going to be a new chair of that committee, and it's going to be Chief Rojas. In the past, uh, Judith Trotman had been chair of that committee, but this change goes into effect next month. There was also a report of a radio drill that was conducted. Um, all but one of the radios did respond, and the one that did not respond was due to batteries, so the drill captain is going to make sure that that problem is corrected. There is also a need for instructors for C for CPR and first aid and training for a good neighbor captain. Uh, the person that had been doing that for many years has resigned. So any residents that um, have a desire to be a part of the task force and can teach CPR and first aid can please call the disaster good task force office. There has been a subcommittee formed to do research and develop an annex for animal rescue in the event there is a disaster. And so that committee has been formed, but no reports have been submitted so far. We did have the Great California Shakeout October 15th at 10.15 a.m. This uh, shakeout was a drill for um, good neighbor captains only. And it was conducted again at 10.15 on October 15th. As of now, I don't have any results. The results will be discussed at the next task force meeting, which is scheduled for November 24th at 9.30 a.m., and that meeting is virtual as well. Thank you. There were, um, oh, I'm sorry, I should give, I should, I should give dates. Uh, the traffic hearing was held, uh, we have one tomorrow, and there was one after the last, uh, last uh, board meeting of Third Mutual on the Wednesday following. Um, the consent calendar shows over 400, 402 violations, and that means that they agreed to and paid the fines. So all we did was look at 13 folks who came to discuss their violations with us. Uh, there were 13. <clears throat> 13 were found, all found, were found guilty, but three received a lesser fine, they received no fine uh, or, or a lesser fine be, due to their circumstances. Four of which were parking, one of which was charging, uh, vehicle charging, two was lack of uh, uh, um, registration, and three for speeding. And I should mention that speeding violations allow the uh, violator to Go to traffic court. Excuse me. Go to traffic school, and the fine is uh, automatically reduced uh, to uh, twenty dollars, and that's the uh, extent of my report. Okay. Any questions for uh, traffic hearing? Okay. Anything else from any other committee? Okay. We'll go on to item fifteen, future agenda items. I uh, have nothing new to report on at this time. I think uh, someone's going to be kicking off in January. So stand by for news on that. Anything that we need to put on future agenda items? I think insurance is going to be a continuing item. So uh, we'll highlight that as well. We'll make that uh, 15D. Uh, 
Okay. Any other items you'd like uh, added to future agenda? Okay, hearing none, we'll go on to item 16, director's comments. And I'll just start here, what's on my screen? Uh, Eric Abada? Uh, no more comments. Uh, thank you, Director Parsons. Okay, Director Frankel. Uh, no comments, thank you. Director Materi. No comments, thank you. Okay, Director Jarrett. I would like to mention uh, that Annie and I are working on the program for the annual meeting. So we have gotten, we, we're going to have parts for everybody to participate. So please don't think you are going to get away with not being a part of the annual meeting because every director will be participating. So if we haven't already talked to you about your part in the program, we're going to be doing that. But we have really been impacted. Our deadline was month yesterday. And I talked to Eileen at the communication committee meeting and Susan. We Everybody had to get their materials to Susan by yesterday at the end of the day. And, of course, now we're impacted because we can't send them things. But, but we haven't been able to get all of the materials we need from st and information from staff. So... That'll come along. We'll we'll work it out. And communication said they've worked with us on the deadline. Okay, let me just follow up on that. Our annual meeting for everybody. Uh, to notice this is the fifth of November at nine thirty a.m. virtual meeting. Okay, anything else, Director Derek? No, that's all. Thank you. Okay, Director Munchen. Thank you. Well, Director Jarrett, I'm hoping that uh, I will have updated slides for the finance that includes September information. So that's what I'm waiting on. Uh, but other than that, uh, Director Parsons, thank you for running a very quick and smooth meeting. I uh, appreciate the shortness of it. Thank you. Okay. Director Ingdahl? Uh, comments to uh, uh, Director Michnik. That was a nice presentation. I like the bar charts. Helps understand it. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you for the good meeting. Okay. Director for meeting? Fraser? Um, no comment, to Mr. President. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Director Wayne? Craig, if you're still on? Okay. He may have had to leave. Uh, Director Gibson? I'd just like to reiterate, I think, with Robert's presentation on the finances, that's a little bit more easier to understand and certainly encourage people to get a little bit closer to our finances because they are so important. Otherwise, thank you for the meeting. Okay, and for everybody, Director Gibson, this is his last uh, major board meeting until the annual meeting, and that's why he's smiling so big. So we thank you for your efforts in filling in for us uh, this year. Uh, you've come across a lot of good uh, effort and questions. And I know you disseminate a lot of information. So. Okay, uh, Wayne May, any comments from you? No comment, thank you. Okay, Rosemary. Uh, I, I talked about, I think, at the president's meeting that we had the real estate meeting with real estate people and did the notes get to the board? Steve, mm. did you get the minutes? Uh, I said something, but I'm not sure that was in the minutes. Okay, ago. well, Siobhan was on top of that, so I'm sure it'll be taken care of. But And uh, I, I heard, but I don't know this for a fact, that there was going to be a follow-up meeting, so we'll keep you posted. And also, um, I talked to Siobhan, and they're in the midst of scheduling a contract meeting. And I will go to both of these meetings um because it's important uh, from the part of VMS, but it's also uh, important for the part of third. So I keep you uh, posted in case you don't say, send anyone, and I have. But uh, for the contractor meeting, I believe that they're asking um, the M and C chairs to go to that. But you know, I'll I'll just keep you posted. And okay. uh, also, I know that uh, Jeff has a copy of the United contracts, which they're supposed to be reviewing and then pass it over to me and Wei Ming. Uh, but there's also, uh, have you 
finished yours, BMS contract? Has that been handed over to Is that a yes? I see your head moving. <laughs> okay, so when are you going to be getting it in? Jeff. So the... Um, Sandra, you have an answer for that? <laughs> you don't think I'm actually going to jump in before Steve responds to you? <laughs> well, I, I just want to know because we're supposed to review them, so... Uh, I don't have anything that I know of right now. Respond to that. Jeff, is there? Jeff, hello. So, is, are those supposed to be in? So we, we're. Did uh, I miss something? Re relative to the relative to the VMS contract, um, we're at the we're reviewing it at the staff level, and then we'll be um, introducing it to you at the VMS board soon. We'll have an update tomorrow. Yeah, but in fact. you have third? We'll have an you update. Have third? Yes. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. You answered it. Yeah. <coughs> we <coughs> turned ours a long time ago, Gray. Okay. Well, that's great. So they're reviewing them, then we're going to review them, and we hopefully will get them done. And also, um, I guess you're re recruiting soon in your spare time uh, the person for VMS because you have one replacement coming up. Right. Okay, thank you very much. And it was a very good meeting, very informative. Thank you thank all you. for doing such a great job. Okay, we're going to Jeff, then Siobhan. Okay, no comments? And I don't have any comments. Thank you. Okay, it looks like Sandra gets the last word here. Oh. <laughs> um. My only comment is one of uh, appreciation for the really hard work that this board is doing and committing to uh, the third mutual. And so I thank you for the honor of working with you. And I think that you're making a huge difference in this community. Okay, thank you. And uh, at this time, we're going to recess, but I'd like to ask Director McCary, who's going to be directing it, how long of a recess she would like, and then we can come back. Um, I, I think 15 minutes is good. Anybody needs more than 15 minutes? Okay, we'll keep the link up. And if you get uh, cut off, just come back, I believe, on this, uh, what you logged in before. Okay, thank you so much, folks. And the meeting's adjourned. Did you, did you say just keep the link on? Yes.